She looks after China's largest online travel company. She helped orchestrate its biggest acquisition ever of UK Skyscanner for $1.7 billion. This week on Managing Asia, we speak to Jane Sun, CEO of Ctrip. Uh, we very much like to build our company as the most innovative uh, online travel company in the whole world. Jane Sun, one of the most powerful women in business outside the U.S., according to Fortune magazine. The woman who has been part of Sea Trip's rise over the past 12 years. When I joined the company, we were only 500 million market cap. Now we are close to be uh, more than 25 billion uh, in the past uh, 18 years. Charming, intelligent, she's the daughter of two chemical engineers. Educated in China and the US, she worked for KPMG and applied materials in America before returning to join Sea Trip in 2005. The online travel site was already flying high on China's travel boom. People, after they buy a house, buy a car, uh, the rest of the money they would like to use to explore the world. Secondly, with the income levels that's increasing, the visa restrictions by many countries are being lifted. So we are free to go many countries and visit many other countries. In 2016, she took over the helm from co-founder James Liang, who stayed on as chairman. As CEO, is your next push all about capturing the outbound travel market that's worth some $260 billion? Uh, that's correct. We have two fields that we're working on. Outbound definitely uh, is very important for us. So we made lots of investment in the outbound business. And also domestic market is huge too. Mm -hmm. uh, China has 1.3 billion people. Although Ctrip is a good player in the market, our market share is still below 10%, still a small percentage. Mm. So we're very excited both domestically and internationally. We have great opportunities. How much of the outbound market do you hope to capture? Mm -hmm. Outbound market right now, uh, C-Trip in terms of the air ticket, uh, for business class and first class tickets, we sell about 50%. Uh, however, for the overall uh, tickets, it's still way below 30%. So there is still great room for us to expand. Uh, to what extent does the One Belt, One Road initiative in China help to spur online travel oh, it's in a China? Great push. Uh, because of government's positive um, motivation in One Belt, One Road, uh, lots of countries that is not so popular before uh, now becomes very popular uh, on our road. Mm -hmm. uh, so for Turkey, for example, Morocco, all these countries have a very nice pickup based on the customer's search result. Ctrip has been on an aggressive acquisition path, buying over its fiercest local rivals, China and Elon and overseas Skyscanner in the UK and three tour operators in the US, making it the number two player in the game worldwide. You made CEO of Ctrip in November last year. One week later, you announced a major acquisition mm -hmm. buying UK-based flight search engine mm -hmm. Skyscanner, Skyscanner for $1.7 billion. To mm -hmm. what extent has this helped to increase your global reach mm -hmm. in the online travel marketplace? Yeah, we had an uh, opportunity to talk with the management team and we have lots of common value uh, between two teams. Uh, they are very technology-driven, brilliant, brilliant execution team. Uh, so very down to earth. So when we talk with each other, we feel that their global brand uh, and global expertise uh, will be an addition to CTRIP's team. Uh, so very quickly we reach an agreement uh, to help each other uh, to strengthen our product offerings. Mm. Well, it's been almost a year since the acquisition. How is integration coming along? Wonderful, wonderful. Our philosophy is always look for uh, the vertical 
leader in the industry. And once we find them, we leave them alone and give them lots of synergy, uh, bring customers to them, uh, and uh, let them run their own operations. Mm -hmm. uh, so our philosophy is if it is a strong team, uh, we give them a lot of autonomy, and they do very well. Mm -hmm. To what extent are you turning Skyscanner into a full-fledged travel platform where they'll be doing more bookings instead of search, just search? Yeah, so the first step we are doing is to give the direct booking facilities to them instead of jump from Skyscanner's uh, website mm -hmm. to Ctrip's website, they can book in their website. So the user's experience increased tremendously. And as a result, uh, the satisfaction rate increased, volume increased, so it's a win-win approach. Mm. And next thing, maybe we'll add more product to it. Uh, Transportation-related product is uh, very favored uh, by their customers. So for example, rental car business, when they fly from Shanghai to Singapore, as soon as you land in Singapore airport, we'll be able to chart a rental car for our customer. So naturally, all these products will go with each other. So it sounds like you're putting in place your own business model within Skyscanner itself. Is it true? Um, is it correct? It's very self-driven. Uh, Skyscanner team is very strong. They looked at our model and talked to us, and they know their business much better than we do. They know their customers much better than we do. So as soon as we have a couple of sessions for Brainstorm, uh, the team come up with the implementation uh, uh, strategy and let us know what's their priority. Air first, rental car next, to train mm -hmm. second. So the plan is very much developed uh, spontaneously uh, by both technology team. Mm -hmm. Before Skyscanner, uh, C-Trip also bought into three tour operators in the U.S. and mm -hmm. you took a 10% stake mm -hmm. and make my trip in India. What's mm -hmm. next on your acquisition strategy? Uh -huh. What's out there you want to acquire? Yeah, I think in terms of acquisition, uh, C-Trip is very disciplined. Uh, we hold three uh, principles for our investment strategy. The first mm -hmm. one is it needs to be closely related to travel industry. The second one is the target we are look at needs to be number one or number two in their vertical. The third one is when we enter into the market, the price needs to be reasonable. Uh, so uh, the three investment has three purposes. Uh, we talked about Skyscan, a very strong technology mm -hmm. team uh, for the three local tour operators, because we already see uh, the shift from Europe to the United States mm -hmm. after the 10 year visa uh, is opened up to Chinese citizens. Mm -hmm. Many uh, people want to bring their children to study, to travel in the USA. So the three operators locally will be able to provide the best service to our customers. But in terms of acquisition, what's missing in your portfolio that you want to buy overseas? Uh, we don't have specific target, but uh, I think it's important for the company to grow organically, mm -hmm. very strong. And then when there is an opportunity, we'll evaluate. Mm -hmm. The capital controls imposed by the Chinese government, will it impact the way you acquire overseas? Not really. It doesn't impact us uh, from a material perspective. Uh, C-Trip is listed on NASDAQ, so the capital we raise is uh, offshore. International business right now accounts for something like 20% right. of the company's total revenues. Mm -hmm. Uh, with the lifting of visa restrictions and mm -hmm. more Chinese traveling abroad, where do you see the numbers for international business? Oh, we very much like to see the, when we see international, it includes the outbound business. Uh, so we very much like to grow that business to at least one third of our business. Mm -hmm. Under what sort of time frame? About a five year time frame. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your relationship with U.S. and European-based travel giant Priceline. Mm -hmm. They have a 9% stake in C-Trip, mm -hmm. but they also own Kayak, mm -hmm. which is a direct competitor mm -hmm. to Skyscanner. Are you both partners and competitors at the same time? How does it work? Yeah, I think we have a, a very good partnership with Priceline, uh, and we have lots of uh, supplementary skills. Uh, C-Trip is very strong in China, and uh, Priceline is very uh, strong in Europe and the rest of the world. So historically, we formed this partnership to share the inventory with each other, and so far, so good. Mm. I think we learn a lot from each other, and going forward, uh, we can contribute 
contribute uh, to each other, mm. our own strength. So that's the partnership. What about the competition bit? Yeah, I think every company has their own priority. Uh, so for Priceline, I think they are very strong in international hotel offerings, uh, their globalization, branding. Uh, for Ctrip, it's a very young, innovative company. Mm -hmm. Instead of having just one or two products, we have 30 products. Mm -hmm. Our philosophy is we follow what our customers need. Anything they need during their travel, uh, we need to offer So it. it's a one-stop shop for the exactly. Chinese traveler. Exactly. Mm. Talking about your relationship with Priceline, people can't help but compare your operating margins with them. Mm. Your operating margins now stand in the mid-teens, mm. while well, Priceline is in the mid-30s. Mm. What are you doing to improve your margins? Yeah, I think as we improve our scalability, margin uh, will improve because technology investment is very scalable. How quickly do you hope to close the gap? Uh, in theory, uh, we can get to the margin very easily, but uh, if you stop investing into the future or tomorrow, uh, then it's not good for the future business because the mar market is growing so fast. Mm -hmm. So we have a choice to give all the money back today or utilize these margin, invest into the future mm -hmm. of our product, our technology and the services. And we believe invest into future will give us a better return mm -hmm. in the future. So to make this clear, you're actually sacrificing a bit of your margins to capture more market share. Exactly. Okay. You also bought a stake into your domestic rivals, China and Elong, to cut down on price discounting in the domestic market. Mm -hmm. Have prices stabilized as a result? Yeah, I think in order for the industry to have very healthy ecosystem, uh, we need to, instead of cut everything to, to the bone, we need to uh, really to be uh, build a very healthy ecosystem and then invest our money to the things that help us our customers for user experience. For example, uh, this time when the shooting in Las Vegas happened, mm -hmm. our technology enabled us to identify where our customers are within two minutes. So within one hour, our customers were rescued out. And the very next day, if customers choose to uh, return back home, we are able to put them on the first flight back to China. In the last year, 2016, Ctrip posted its first annual loss since its listing on the NASDAQ in mm -hmm. 2003 because of costs related to the China deal. How do you expect to do this fiscal year? Yeah, I think uh, already uh, in the past couple of quarters, we have seen improved margins. Uh, so going forward, we will uh, again invest heavily into the technology uh, so the scalability and efficiency will be improved. Mm -hmm. And uh, looking at the market opportunity, some of them will be uh, reflected in the improved margin. Some of them will be used for future investment into technology and branding. Is this Sky scanner acquisition finally paying off? Uh, very much so. What sort of contribution will it make to your fiscal results this year? Uh, they contribute to, to uh, uh, single digits uh, growth. What sort of single digit growth are we looking at? High uh, single digit, low single yeah, digit? Yeah, high single digits. Um, when you look at some of the top online travel sites, we have Priceline focusing on hotels, we have Expedia focusing on hotels and air tickets. C trip has a wide array of products. Like you said before, you're into hotels, air tickets, mm. trains, uh, buses, rental cars. Can you be everything to the Chinese traveler? Can you maintain your focus doing so many things? Yeah, so what we do internally is adopting a baby tiger program. What's a baby tiger baby program? Baby tiger meaning uh, our young employees are very encouraged to bring their business plan to executive team. Uh, to give you an example, our bus uh, CEO is very young. Uh, he came to talk to James and myself and let us know he wants to run a bus, bus business. And two of us were very surprised. The bus, every ticket, you can only make 30 cents, mm -hmm. right? How can you make it work? Uh, and the second month, he came back again. By the time he came back, the third time, we asked him, how long, how many people, how much money do you need to prove you're right or wrong? And he goes, I need six people, six months. 2 million RMB, which is equivalent to he about- He was that specific? Very specific, 300K USD. And I asked him, how can we tell if it's successful or not? And he goes, if my daily transaction exceed 10,000 per day, you let me keep it. Otherwise, you close me down. So on the spot, we said, deal, go run with it. You have got six people, six months to prove you're right or wrong. And only, it only takes him one month 
for his daily transaction to exceed 10,000 per day. So he proved you wrong. Yeah, in the last year, he delivered 30 million per year to our portfolio. So these young, innovative entrepreneurs are very encouraged by our company. So all the verticals are run by a very small team we call a baby tiger. They have their own CEO, CTO, and a CFO. It's measured very results driven. Mm -hmm. That enable us to unleash the energy um, in our team. Don't go away up next. There is one product we offer. Uh, it costs 200,000 USD per person per trip. So guess how long did it take us how to sell? How long did it take to sell? 17 seconds. 17 seconds. That's right. More with Jane Sim, CEO of C-Trip. In just a moment, Managing Asia will be right back. Hi, I'm Christine Tan and thanks for watching Managing Asia on CNBC Live. You can check out more of our great content by clicking on the videos on screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for the very best in feature programming. Thanks for watching.